What if I told you that the next world war won't be fought with tanks or bullets or guns, but it'll be taught with code? It won't be fought on the streets, it'll be fought on servers and algorithms, but its results may be just as deadly. Today, the world's most powerful companies are pouring billions into a race to control the next generation of artificial intelligence, and it is moving way faster than anyone expected. Welcome to the 21st century's version of the space race, not a race to the moon, it's a race to control the mind. And whoever wins will take control. Artificial intelligence is no longer science fiction. It's not even an emerging technology anymore. It's here. It's already reshaping industries, governments, and society through powerful models and platforms. And that's only accelerating with time. Behind the scenes, something else is happening. What used to be slow academic journey is now a geopolitical arms race. Not just between companies, but entire countries. We're talking about a race fueled by hundreds of billions of dollars of annual expenditures. Some call this innovation, others call it an existential risk to the human race. In this episode, we're going to break it down for you. Who's doing the racing and why? What is really at stake? Can anyone actually win this race? First, let's start with the corporate players, because they're the ones that get the most publicity these days. At the top of the list has got to be OpenAI. Backed by Microsoft, it's launched ChatGPT in 2022, and which quickly became the face of generative AI. With over 180 million users and rumored GPT-5 in the works, OpenAI is betting on being the first to reach artificial general intelligence. The amount of improvement that OpenAI has shown in the past couple of years, I've witnessed because I use it. It is astounding but we've only seen the beginning. The pioneers of deep learning come from Google. After AlphaGo's legendary win back in 2016, DeepMind has merged with Google Brain to create Gemini, its answer to ChatGPT. The control that Google has over information sources around the world give it a tremendous advantage in the training side of artificial intelligence. Anthropic. This is a safety-first AI startup founded by former OpenAI researchers it's backed by $4 billion in investment from Amazon and from Google. Its Claude model pushes boundaries on constitutional AI and in many other ways. Again, it is heavily aimed at controlling the data sources. Meta has a different approach. While others go closed source, Meta is open sourcing its Llama model. The bet? Let the community build the future, decentralized and open. And that has been a successful product line for many companies, it'll be interesting to see if Meta can pull it off. Now, let's pull away from the companies and look at the nation states that are involved. The three main players are China, the United States, and the EU, but in very different ways. China is investing heavily under its next generation AI development plan. As usual, there's less attention paid to safety and more attention paid to being first or to getting technology that is shall we say, borrowed from others. The United States still leads and leads solidly in foundational models and compute architecture, in other words, in generating AI from the beginning. The EU, as usual, is less focused on building models and more focused on regulating them. It is not clear that this is a strategy designed to win this race. So if this isn't just a race of brains, what is it? It's a race of resources, of ideology, and of power, what's at stake. It isn't just about chatbots anymore. Economically, Goldman Sachs estimates that AI could boost global GDP by $7 trillion in the next decade, and I have no doubts that they may be underestimating that. They can automate up to 300 million jobs. That doesn't mean they'll cut rid get rid of them. It means that 300 million existing jobs will give way to things that AI does, and those people will go to something else. To companies, AI is a growth multiplier. To governments, it's the new oil. But it's new oil with tremendous power behind it and a lot smarter. Whoever controls AI controls knowledge. Not just because knowledge is used to train AI, but because AI is used to find and present knowledge. If foundational models become gatekeepers to education, to decision making, and to creativity, then AI isn't a product, it's a power source. Politically, in a multipolar world, AI becomes both a soft and a hard power tool. We're only starting to see its military and diplomatic uses, 
My suspicion is, given the amount of money that military spend on these sorts of things, the greatest advances will be the secret ones made by governments and especially their military. So let's talk about key moments that changed everything. Where did this new world come from? And where did it come from in the past five years? Because that's the major advances that have been made. 2023, two years ago, OpenAI's ChatGPT4 did not just generate better text. It passed bar exam. It explained tax law and it explained it correctly. It wrote complex code, code too difficult for a person to write in first draft, and it did it in first draft. And it reasoned with images, finding things in images, classifying and categorizing images and presenting them. The line between tool and cognitive partner was officially blurred and then destroyed. QLeak and OpenAI's turmoil, November of 2023, a leak surfaced about an internal OpenAI project, possibly working on the early general AI. Then came the shocking firing and fast reinstatement, I might add, of CEO Sam Altman. It exposed deep questions about governance, secrecy, and power, and it exposed great conflicts going on inside the power sources of AI as to its direction. The EU Act in 2024, this was the world's first attempt at a comprehensive AI law. Now, governments have never been particularly efficient at staying up with technological developments, and we shall see how far the AI law is towards actually dealing correctly with AI. It's introduced rules around transparency, risk categories, and watermarking. And it ignited, of course, a global debate about who should control AI and how. Let's take a step back. We've heard a lot about the existential risk that AI has for the human race. Some top researchers warn as models become more autonomous, we risk losing control. Heck, we risk losing understanding of what's going on. A 2023 survey of AI experts gives a median 10% chance of AI causing human extinction or severe disempowerment. I'm not quite sure what severe disempowerment means, but I sure as heck know what human extinction means, and this is a bad idea. I also think it's extremely unlikely. Bias and misinformation. Models trained on biased data can encode systems, racism, sexism, misinformation. And once that is scaled, these biases become institutionalized and indetectable, and they become that at, at machine-based speed. Fake content is also on the rise, intentionally fake as well as accidentally fake because of the way AI works. From deep fake political ads to cloned voices, Detection, it's still lagging far behind generation. Access and inequality. As computing costs rise, only big tech can afford to train frontier models. That doesn't mean that training models is out of reach of the normal programmer. It means that the advanced ones, the most advanced ones, are the ones that are completely in control of the big tech and government. That risks creating an AI elite when smaller countries, companies, and individuals are left behind. We have seen this happen with the internet. We're see we are seeing it happen with AI. AI isn't neutral. It reflects who builds it, who trains it, and who profits from it. Who's likely to win? Who's gonna win the AI race? I'm not sure that there is a point in asking that question because I'm not sure we'd know what a victory looked like. It may not be who wins, it's what kind of world we're racing toward and whether we'll like it. Let's look at three possible futures. Winner take all. OpenAI or Google or Anthropic builds super intelligence first and locks in the market, the military uses, and the data dominance. And it's probably the latter of those that gives them the most power. What's the pros for this? Well, obviously, faster innovation. The more consolidated something is, the faster it can be innovated. On the other hand, the con is that a massive power imbalance is set in and you're getting control in a few hands that may not be beneficial to the rest of the human race. Or a second alternative, a multipolar AI ecosystem, meaning many sources of power. The world splits into AI spheres, the US, China, the EU, open source, and who knows what else. Pros, a lot of diversity, a lot of resilience, and ultimately, the greater advance. Cons, fragmentation. Potential for a digital cold war. Potential for conflicting AI systems that lead to conflict. Global collaboration and regulation. Public labs, international audits, and shared rules 
build a safer AI future. Pros, aligned progress. Cons, slow progress. Because every time the government gets involved in something, it tends to slow things down. And politically, it is probably exceptionally difficult, and probably among uh, groups like the United States, China, and the EU, it's impossible. In the end, it may not be a country or a company that wins, but the system of governance that we build around AI, which is another way of saying AI wins. The AI race is not just about speed. It's about direction and who gets to steer. So the next time you hear about ChatGPT5 or Gemini or a breakthrough in open source AI, ask yourself, who benefits from this? And I don't just mean what company or what country. Is it humans? Is it AI? Who's left out of the process? And what future is being coded into existence? And what future for whom? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next time as we dive deeper into the future of artificial intelligence regulation. Until then, reflect, question, stay curious, and stay informed.